Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks. Today's project is these pair of Alden shoes. Now, most of the time when I get stuff that come through the mail, um, there's usually a checklist of what the customer wants done to their items. This particular pair, uh, the customer sent me a picture that he's seen somewhere that he likes, and he wants his shoes to be fairly close to what you know he likes in the picture. So we are going to tear everything down, add some storm welt, uh, midsoles, JR soles, clean the uppers, try to shine the toes up a little bit nice and uh, shiny, and add some laces, and try to make his shoes look like what's on the picture. All right, let's get started. Now there's some scratches at the toe. I'm going to try to see if we can make that better. Got to sand those out. Here goes nothing. Now some people were asking me about the pictures I have hanging in the front of the shop of my dad. When I get a chance, I'll see if I can show you guys and talk about it now this was uh this has been resold before a few times somebody did a half sole they did an okay job it's not too bad and before the half sole somebody did a full sole they spliced it right underneath the heel most of the time whenever we do full soles we like to do the whole thing but some people like to cut it off right here and and save the new sole piece the back for other projects but i don't i don't particularly care about that type of uh that type of work i mean either you're going to do the whole thing or you're going to do the whole thing you know these are 270 constructed welt which means that it's just from the ankle bone to the ankle bone the welt is it is made it's not all the way around but we're gonna have to make it look like it's a 360 and i'll show you guys a little later how i do that and we're not going to salvage anything here just trying to remove trying to remove it all We're using a little bit of uh, turpentine. You can use acetone if you like. Well, it really depends on what you're doing, right? If you're really stripping the whole shoe, acetone would work better. You're just kind of wiping things down for general cleaning, maybe a little bit of rubbing alcohol, some home remedies and stuff. There are products out there you can use. I'm not going to get into the details of what products because I, I, I don't do that. I don't, I don't make, I don't compare products and give reviews and, and, and all that. I, I don't do that. I don't have time for that. There's a lot of other guys on YouTube who do that kind of a thing. I, I don't have time for that. You guys can watch some of their videos and if you want product reviews and different different shoe reviews which is better which is not I, I don't do that i get i get that question asked a lot hey you know why don't you do some i don't know what you call it but just comparing different shoes different last shapes i don't have time for that I don't even know the details the most of the time for me to give you guys advice on what to what to look for when you're buying something. So don't listen to me. 
Yeah, when it comes to repairing and recrafting and stuff, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty good at that. But reviews, I'm, I'm not really much of a review guy. There are other people who do that really well and who are knowledgeable on the different types of styles and models and shapes. I'm just a, I'm just a work and be. All I knows is how to fix shoes and bags. That's all I know. And this was pretty dirty. Don't forget the tongue, whatever you're doing, right? I mean, there's a lot of times people neglect that area. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Now we got to work on these uh, scratching scratches at the toe. This is a 400 grit sandpaper. This is probably 800 grit. It's 400, but it's worn down very uh, fine. This is a big four. Take that old sandpaper, sand it some more. This is like wet sanding a car. You know how body shops, when they, when they paint the car, and then they'll, they'll take a fine sandpaper and wet it and sand the surface to get that nice and smooth. That's basically what we're doing here. We're smoothing out that surface. Trying to get rid of that scratch. Now, yes, you have to apply some dye to it afterwards, but this is your base. You have to prep the base nice and smooth before you do any dye work. So we're gonna let that one dry. We'll come back and see if we're gonna apply some color to it and try to even that out. We still got this one to do too. This is, this is pretty bad also. All right, let's continue. So let me show you guys something. This is the footbed. This, the, the, damn, if I can speak, the red ribbon you're looking at there is called a gemming. The gemming is glued to the footbed and it's stitched onto the side along with the welt. Now, Alden does is that they have a another piece of canvas that goes right in the middle of that, right? Because what happens is that over time, this gemming comes loose. When that gemming comes loose, the size of the shoe changes. It doesn't fit the same anymore. So the canvas acts as a bridge between the sides of the gemming and, um, and the footbed. This is a very good structural support for the shoe and not that you know most dress shoes don't get really abused for the gemming to come loose but it does happen so we're going to remove that we're going to replace it with a new piece and there's the canvas piece i think it's a cool idea not too many manufacturers do this Alan Edmonds, um, I think they used to do it, if I'm not mistaken, but they had it right in the midsection here, not the whole way through the shoe. This is a very good structural support. I know Alden's been getting some slack about some, you know, their fiberboard heel bases. You know, in the fiberboard midsoles, but... It's a good quality shoe. It truly is. Is it 100%? No. 
what is 100% these days. There's a lot of manufacturers who cut corners that you don't even see. So it's a good American made company. I support it as best as I can. And um, if you can, do it. We don't want to see another company go overseas. Production drops, the quality drops. All right, let's continue. Now, don't worry about the color. We can blend that in a little bit. Now, after I sanded it, let it dry. <laughs> always sneeze three times <laughs> sorry so after we sanded it i added some mahogany feebings dye we buffed it real well the important thing here is we're trying to get rid of the scratches not the color not just yet the color will come down the road all right let's continue you see the difference already Get in there slowly but surely. All right, so we've got the storm welt on. You guys see that little hump right there? That makes it, supposedly that, would, that makes it a waterproof so water doesn't creep in on the edges there. Most of the time you see the storm welt, it's on boots, it's not on shoes. There are some shoes that are, that are done this way, but the majority of it is boots. That's what you call a storm welt right there. Now this was a 270 degree uh, design, which meant that the welt stopped here back to the other side of the ankle bone we stitched it all the way around but that stitch is just there temporary it's nothing really structural okay just the back part here so once the video once the midsole Lou bug say hello to everybody Lou bug hello why are you creeping around the corner like that <laughs> come here uh, my, fault, my buddy my buddy Louie's uh, visiting me today. <laughs> okay, can I finish the video? Yeah. You sure? Well, don't be creeping around the corner like oh. that, like you're going to stab me or something. Oh, no. <laughs> all right, so once the midsole comes on, this will get stitched all the way around, just like it's a good year welted. The back will look like it's a, it's basically the welt is attached. And then we're going to go ahead and nail the back part to the footbed. That's what's going to make it structurally supportive because that's just there. The stitches are just there to give it that shape while I work on putting the midsole on. So it's getting there slowly but surely.
All right, now, so we've got our outsole stitcher. Um, there's a bottom and there's a top thread. So the shoe gets stitched like this upside down. We're gonna call this the welt thread, which is the bottom thread right here. Now, you can do white or you can do black, whatever you wanna do. Now, when it comes time to change the, change the thread, this is how I do it. We're gonna change it. It is white now, we're gonna put black in it. Come down here, Reza. So basically we take the white thread and we're gonna weave it into the black one, which is the black one's gonna be the new thread. Get a little closer, Reza. I know my hands are shaking, but. Okay. Now we got the white thread, actually the other way. Let me, let me start over. The black thread has gotta go into the white. I did that backwards. Okay. Twist the thread and insert a new thread through the old one. Okay, once you got that in there, then you just weave this. Two, one, two. We're just using it like a braided three, three line braid. Okay, you do that about three, four times. And then you pull, and you pull the white thread, and the black will follow it. And that's how we change the thread on our outsole stitchers. All right, let's continue. Okay, now that we got the black thread in, now the bobbin thread. We can, again, this is, you can do whatever you want, whatever color you want. We're gonna take the white out, we're going to put the blue in there. You can do whatever you want. I mean, you know, this is nothing but aesthetics, you know. Okay. This right here gives it the stitch density. This is for very large stitches, small. So we want to do by medium right here. All right, here goes nothing. Beautiful stitch, and a brand new welt. All right, let's continue. All right, now we trim the edges. Come here, Reza. This is a trim edge trimmer. There are 16 blades right here, and this sucker turns very fast. Now, most people do when when it's in this condition here, in this stage here, they'll sand the edges. I do things a little differently. When I use the trimmer here, it leaves a little. It leaves a little bit of a lip right on the edge of the sole right there. And when it's finished, it gives it a nice profile, not really flat profile, but with that lip. That's the reason I use these trimmers here. Now, see how fast these are. That's just one run. I mean, it'll it's it's pretty sharp, so you got to be careful with it. And that's how I like to finish my edges. Let's continue. All right. Once I've trimmed the edges, I spend a little time in sanding that smooth. Now we want this to be smooth, nice and smooth. Hey, Lubug. Yeah. How smooth we want it, brother? 
smooth as a baby's bottom. Oh yeah. That's right. Now we wet this a little bit to soften the fibers of the leather. And once you run that sandpaper on the edge, it crushes the fibers and makes it really as smooth as the baby's bottom. <laughs> right, Lou Bug? Yes, sir. Every time. All right, let's continue. All right, so now comes, to me, I don't really particularly care about shining or giving it a mirror gloss. It's not my favorite part of the job. We're going to use Saphir. And um, we're just going to just make an attempt at shining these toes. And I'm not going to do a mirror shine. I'm just not. I don't have time for that. I told the customer I'll do my best, give it a nice shine. And I'll do it, you know. It'll look very nice. It's not going to be a mirror mirror. Put the coffee on and just spend some time and give it a nice shot around the toe area. And this will be the last thing we have to do on this job. And we will be done with it. All right. Let's keep on continuing and continuing and continuing. I don't know how many coats. See ya. All right, so a little story time. This is my dad right here. And this picture right here is the company's logo. Look on the... Say hi, Reza. Hi, everybody. That's the picture right there. Basically, I did an outline drawing and, um, and turned that into a logo. Isn't that cool? I love that picture. Now, this is not an original picture. It's a copy of, of the original. Original ones were like two inches by four inches. Well, let's come over here. These are some of the pictures my dad's workshop. He used to be a shoemaker, not a shoe, not a cobbler. Some right there. The glare. I don't know if you guys can see it. There's too much glare. There you go. Now this is the oldest picture I have of him. He wasn't married here, so did a little bit of calculation as far as that's him right there. As far as how old he was there, he was in his early 20s there. He died when he was 60. That was in 91. So I was born in 66. He was 30, 36 when I was born. And my, I have an older brother who was 10 years older, so 26. So when my, when my brother was born, it was in 20, he was 26 years old. So approximately 25, 24, early 20s he was in that picture. Now let's come to here. That's him also right there on the right. Him. We saw that picture already on top. That's my great grandparents, grandparents, mom and dad, wife and I. That's a picture that was our first date. That was 20, 21 years ago. And these are my boys. That's Stefan, he's 18 now. That's Anto, he's he's 16. It's my grandfather and my grandmother. Grandmother is in the middle, grandfather's on the right. Now they're wearing fezes here. We're not Turkish, we're Armenian. Back then, I guess that was uh, since the countries were so close together, they shared a lot of similarities. And this was our Certificate of Zoning, December 5, 1977. Bedros, which is my father, Dudaklian. That's where Bedos came from. 
Falls Church, City of Falls Church, Virginia. All right, I think that's about it with all the pictures. And this is the picture I painted right there of the elves back in 1999. All right, let's continue. All right, welcome back. Thank you for joining me on this project. Now, laces are now my choice. Where's the picture? That's the customer's choice. That's what he wanted. That's the closest I have for it. I hope he likes them. If not, no big deal. We'll take it off. So I think they turned out pretty good. So storm welt. It was a 270 degree storm welted shoe. We converted into look like of a 360 degree shoe. It definitely gave it a beefier look, you know? And um, I think that, um, I think it looks very cool. I like it. Put a French tip on there, Lulu tip. Put the V cleats in the back, V cleat nails in the back, double row nails. A couple of details there. I did the best I could on the shine and the toe. The toe turned out pretty good with the scratches. I think that's what I was most concerned with is trying to see if I can make that presentable, not really give it a, like a mirror shine, but um, I think it worked out pretty good. There's the other one. We can still see a little bit of it, but it's definitely presentable, much, much better than what it was. So, all right, well, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it once more. I think this might be my last, um, video before Christmas is around the corner. Wish everybody Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I might do another one before the year is over. Maybe, I'm not sure. I've got one video that I want to finish up is um, about five pairs of floor chimes, and um, we're trying to finalize everything on that. Hopefully, maybe that'll be our first, first video of 2023. I'll see. I'll do my best. All right. Thanks again. Share, comment, uh, subscribe, thumbs up. We'd greatly appreciate all those details. We'll see you guys again on the next project. Take care.